Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest has all his prayers answered quickly, very quickly. He says you can get the same results and even better. Are you interested in having all your prayers answered quickly? Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Are there hidden forces of darkness trying to block God's blessings for your life? Do angels exist, providing us with supernatural protection? Disarming our enemies? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Well, I'm here with my friend Guillermo Maldonado and uh, Guillermo. I have been hearing reports about you. You're going, I'm, you're, every time I hear you're another part of the world, but there is a glory going on in your meetings that are doing things almost, almost unprecedented. For instance, uh, let's just pick one of the countries you've been to recently, uh, Burma. What happened there? Burma was before now is Myanmar. Um, there was a moment I, w I had been praying for a while in my hotel room, and when I left, I got to the arena. Fifteen thousand people, no air conditioning, 110 degrees, very hot. Uh, my team almost fainted. You needed a miracle for that alone. <laughs> yes, we almost fainted. And before I went to the stage, uh, God said to me, "I just want you to stand there and watch me doing it." He said, the most powerful miracles you've ever seen, you work through it. You work it by faith. He said, let me do it. Watch me doing it. And I just stand there, and, and the Lord said to me, I just to declare that, that there will be little kids, deaf and mute, from birth, that will, I will touch tonight. So you were born in that condition? We checked him right now. He was completely deaf. The power of God came upon his ear. And now he can hear and the presence of God came, and, and, and it was such a love, because love is the essence of the presence of God. And when that presence fell in that place, I mean, you saw a lot of people crying and weeping, and nobody touched them. And suddenly, we start taking testimonies. Thirty-five deaf and mute child were healed in that day. Yeah. From birth, from birth. And the glory came, that's what hit, and that place was, was so powerful. We have 95% of those 15,000 people were Buddhist. Oh, and, you didn't tell me that part. Oh, wow. yeah. When I received, when I asked how many of you want to receive Jesus, after what they saw, the love of God came in that place. The people were touching, weeping, and crying, and they all received Jesus, 95%. You know what? That's powerful. You know what is so, to me, yes. is, is priceless. It's, it, 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 it's mind-blowing what he just described is available to every one of us. Yes. And not only available, God wants you operating yes, in yes. the glory. Come on. It's yours. Yes. It's your inheritance. Yes, yes, It belongs yes, yes, to yes, you. Yes, yes. Tell me another country. Um, I went to Mexico. I went to Mexico. I just came back three weeks ago. I spoke to someone was, that was at your meeting there. Yes. And wow. <laughs> That's all I yeah, got to say is, you know, wow. I, you know, Sid, I studied in my house, and I pray for hours. And, and I'm not trying to say that so many things, but I prayed, 
And when I went to the stage, the atmosphere was so charged with the presence. In other words, the places that I've been, the moment I entered, that, the atmosphere changes. And, and I felt that atmosphere, 20,000 people inside the stadium. It was packed. And suddenly the presence, and the Lord said, reminded me. He said, did you, I remind you, he said, remember when I spoke to you, I said, well, God, what did you say? He said, I spoke to you that, that there's some miracles you have seen, powerful miracles that you work by my faith. But now he said, I want to remind you that I want, I want you to watch me doing it. And I said, God is all yours. So when, it, when I enter and I stood up in the stage, five hours in, five hours worshiping God, you will see people getting healed. Ten people in wheelchairs got up. I mean, deaf and mute, and there was a special miracle. This little child, nine years old, he took a bus to come to the place. Twelve hours, as he had to sell um, I, I'm so touched when I hear this. He had to sell plantains to come to the event mm -hmm. because he didn't have any money. He was robbed in the way coming into, the, into oh. the capital. He lost his money. And then he came to the place. He needed a, a heart transplant. And he spoke to her mother and he said, Mom, uh, I will get my miracle when I get to the capital of Mexico. El, el pastor Dublas soltó una palabra de ciencia y dijo hay un niño que se está sanando del corazón en ese mismo momento dice que él sintió un calor y dijo me estoy sanando mamá el hinchazón se fue y ahora también él está haciendo lo que no podía hacer so he came he had the faith and when the glory fell he said I felt a, like a fire in my chest and then he said and I took all my doctors, there were 20 doctors, they took him, they examined him. Cuando yo lo chequé, este, ya no escuché ninguna arritmia, ningún soplo, y le puse un aparatito que mide la oxigenación de la sangre, estaba al 98%, estaba todo bien. Si Dios no hubiese hecho más, este niño es suficiente. Un corazón más. A brand new heart. Nobody touch him. If you're watching now, there's a lot of people there. They miss it. They missing organs in your body. This is very uh, 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 usual because there's a supernatural normal, but the supernatural unusual. And whenever you see this type of miracles, there was some, a woman watching this show, one of my previous show here, and she was missing over, one ovary. And she said when the presence fell in her home, she got a brand new ovary. And then this is what the glory does. I, I know what I'm saying. I know it as if I've seen it happen. I know that yes, on this yes. move of God that is here yes. already, that the average man yes. and woman that knows the Messiah on, will do yes. exactly what he did, and it won't be on a, on a television show because it'll be the new normal yes. for people that have the glory of God on them. Now, many of you, so many have prayed, and, and if you're honest, you've seen few of the prayers answered. And many of you have given up or, or ask others more gifted to pray for them. Many sick have seen too many of their loved ones die and now rely more on doctors or medicine. Guillermo gets all his prayers answered. You will have all your prayers answered. I tell you, you will have all your prayers answered quickly. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. 
Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. Okay. I have a question for you, and yes. then I want to make a statement. Yes. And the question is, what you just described, if you didn't have a prayer life, would that have happened? N not at all. Not at all. And I will explain to you why. Jesus, when he came to this earth, the closest that he was to the Father was through prayer. In other words, he, the closest he was to heaven was through prayer. So if you see in the Bible, you see Jesus. The disciples asked him one time. He, they never asked Jesus, uh, give us more faith or give us more anointing, or give us more power. They asked for, teach us to pray. And what was the reason? Because they saw the results. They saw that Jesus spent, my God, I feel the presence of God. He spent hours in prayer. But most believers can't do that. They or won't do that, yeah, that, or you don't feel like it, or you're tired and you deserve to. Okay, because. <laughs> Because the reason is you can't spend all that time because it's bored, it's boring. Because, yeah. Because you don't have that close relationship. People don't have that close relationship with God. So we need to understand, first of all, Jesus teaches the Abba Father pray. He said, when you pray, you pray, Abba Father, there's an heaven. But, but that means there's a connection. But this is important. Okay, so Jesus, he was the closest to the Father through prayer. He said he prayed he pray all night. And I said to God one day, I said, what do you mean pray all, all night? Does it take all night? He said to me, son, there's prayers that, you, that I can answer immediately. There's some prayers, depending on what you're believing, that I have, you have to accumulate. And that will see an accumulation. What I mean is, the Lord said to me, if you have done any prayer in my will, none of those prayers, not, you were not going to lose none of those prayers. In other words, I heard those prayers, but they're coming to pass. And then he said to me, this is the season. Well, I will answer all my prayers, so all people's prayers. So there's a tipping point. It's got to do. There's an accumulation. Uh, there's the, an accumulation. It's, uh, the accumulation, but there's something extra going. It's the season right. for the tipping point. Right. This is the season. And there's a lot of people sit over there asking, well, I've been praying. I, I, nothing happened. But there's a key for your, uh, for your prayers to be answered quickly. And now. And not one prayer was wasted. Okay, yes. Okay, quickly. Number one, the Bible says, First John, if we pray according to his will, he hear us. And he hear us, we have the petition we have made to God. But now, every prayer in my own life has been according to the will of God. Every prayer we have done, that's the pattern. And, and the Lord said to me, the moment you align with my will, I accelerate those prayers. There's so many people praying, frustrated, because they said, I've been praying, I've been praying, but no matter, no, not amount of time that you pray and pray, if it's not according to the will of God, it will not be answered. So sometimes you need to know what is the will of God. This is four things. First, you must align with the will. You must know the will of God. Is the will of God for you to be healed? Yes. Is the will of God for you to prosper? Yes. Is the will of God to be delivered? Yes. Is the will of God to be a carrier of the presence of God? Yes. As a matter of fact, there's somebody there. Uh, you just had a heart attack. And, and you've been having those, uh, 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 something that they put in the heart. Pacemaker. A pacemaker, right. You, right now, God is healing your body right now. As a matter of fact, God is creating a new heart. I see somebody with a leg, and you've been having, like, you need a brand new uh, cartilage in your leg right now, in your knee. God is, ble is, is touching your body right now. It's not the will of God for you to be sick. It's the will of God. If you want your prayers to be answered now, if you want your prayers to accelerate, 
accelerate now, you must align with the will of God. You must align with heaven. So I see somebody, I see somebody with blindness because of diabetes. You were something, oh yes, Lord. Yes, somebody, um, there's a weird disease. I think it's a one in 100,000. Very weird disease in your skin. God is touching your body now. As, as I minister, the presence of God is following you. I want you to be so hungry yes. to get into the secret place. Yes. It's the secret place that, yes. it, that the Bible talks about. And few Christians ever enter it. And I'm going to tell you, the thing that caused Jesus after ministering all day and being tired to be all up all night and then be energized, he yes. went into the yes, secret yes, place. Yes. I want Guillermo to tell me how he entered the secret place place. And when we come back, I want to, not we are now, but how you started. I want it to ABC. Yes. Be right back. Life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need. You commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe 10. You commute back home. You cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. You wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. There's a path that was created for you, which you alone can take. Day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural miracle anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs. The message of the Bible has not changed, but it's a 21st century world out there. And how we learn about God's miraculous direction for our lives has changed. ISN takes our anointed programs out of the box and gives you complete freedom to watch what you want, when you want, and where you want. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Or you can choose from dozens of powerful episodes of exclusive programs in our online library. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough whenever you need it, wherever you are. Download the free ISN app today. Turn to It's Supernatural. Well, I, I'll tell you something. I was talking to Guillermo before uh, we, we came back, and I said, I see the average on, people yes, watching yes. our show going into hospitals in the oh, amputee man. ward and clearing the whole place out. Hey. That's what I see. But I, but I want to know how you started. First of all, what is the secret place? The secret place is the altar. The secret place is the place when God and man meets. The secret place, Jesus called it closet. He said, when you go into your closet, that's the place we meet we, we, with God. But if we describe that secret place, we can say it this way. The secret place is the place where we access the presence and the glory of God. But if you access, how important is it to be walking in holiness? That's very key. You were saying about myself first. Every single day, said before I go to the Lord, the Bible says, I have a Father that is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. In other words, we start worshiping God. How do I start? I start affirming God's presence. 
In other words, you cannot worship some a God that is not present. So I always say, God, I affirm you, I worship you. So I start affirming God. The second thing is, if there's anything in me, any sin, any iniquity of commission and omission, I, I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me because we must pray from a, from a holiness point position. In other words, before we pray, we have access to his presence. We must be sure we are cleansed and we are forgiven. There's a lot of people frustrated because they, they can never get into the presence. They never feel the presence. How does it feel to be in the presence? Is the present visible? It, what is it? Is everybody for the, every believer? Yes, it is. But we must understand before we go into the presence of God, we want to make sure there's no iniquity mm. because the Bible says your iniquities, your iniquities was an obstacle for me to hear your prayers. What is That's an iniquity? Right. An iniquity is a moral perversion. An iniquity is something that is a mixture, be, be flesh, demonic, and man. That is, that, is, that is an iniquity. There's laws of the kingdom. If we lost the kingdom, we must enter in the laws of the kingdom. What I'm saying is, in other words, God requires, if the protocol of heaven is this, you must affirm God in praise and worship before you start praying. Protocol. You don't go, with, that's the protocol. You, in other words, you don't go with a long list, God ask for this, ask for this. That's the downsize of the believers. And they get frustrated because they, they never align their prayers with, with the will of God. Number two, he said, hallowed be your name, that God is in heaven. And then he comes to the part of forgiveness. In other words, that is the part where we must God and we must be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, washed by the word, and then we ask us the presence. Now, from there, in my own life, the next step is, okay, now God, I am in your presence. I am not, I am access. Prayer gives you access. It's, it's one of the means to access the presence of God. Once, you, how do you know? Because the, you will feel the presence. The Bible says is For this, those that have never felt the presence of God, uh -huh. what is that like? Okay, is for example, I can describe it to you. For example, I feel sometimes like a rain falling on me. Sometimes the man, uh, Job, describe it as goose pump in your body. Because it said one of the characteristics of the presence is, is visible, is tangible. In other words, the cloud was tangible. And when the presence, everybody knows when the presence is there. But I tell you one thing, the only time where I haven't felt the presence is when something was in me that God stopped, that he avoid that for me to feel the presence because he wanted to correct that area. But when, when I'm right with God, when I'm in holiness with God, I can access His presence. But this is so powerful, Sid, because when we get into the presence of God, people said, yeah, you're in the presence and you worship and you feel it and you what? No, that's not the end. Because when you access the presence, you must visualize yourself in the presence. Number two, after you leave. Excuse me, I'm taking you back to one. What do you mean? Tell me what visualize. you visualize. Okay, God is in His throne. Uh-huh. You in front of God. I see. You have an audience with God. Okay. Those that are watching. Every time you pray, you have an audience with God Almighty. And, and then when you enter in the presence, now you say, well, I feel the presence. I feel it. I, I, I feel the goosebump and all that. Wait, wait, wait. That's not the end. The Lord said to me one time, every time you access my presence through prayer, he said, you will become a carrier of my presence. What the word presence means? The word presence means atmosphere. One of the meanings of the word presence is an atmosphere. In other words, you come out of, the, I feel the presence as I'm telling you, you come out of that presence of God or that because of prayer. Who wouldn't want to pray if yes. that's what yeah. happens? <laughs> but, but listen, listen to this, listen to this. You come out with carrying an atmosphere. What atmosphere? The atmosphere of God. I've been in an ele elevator and when I enter in the elevator, people start cursing. Demons start screaming. And, and then they said, what are you carrying? You, I, I'm a carrier of the presence. But it's not only me. It's any person that goes to the presence of God in prayer. You will become a carrier of the presence of God. I, I've been in a stadium city, stadiums full of people. And at the moment I enter, the atmosphere changed. Not because of me, because I'm a carrier of the presence of God. People getting healed. I was ministering in, in Malaysia, a stadium, 30,000 people. I mean, I mean, half a mile of sick people. And when I entered, the presence fell. And before I start praying for people, 21 wheelchairs empty. People got I'm, I'm going to tell you something, Guillermo. I'm going to tell you something. And this is a fact. 
what he is describing is you. Yes. What he is describing is what God says you are to go throughout the whole world and proclaim the good news. You, 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 you! Yes. <laughs> Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I was assaulted last February and I had a concussion and felt tired all the time. Tonight, when Sid and his guests prayed for healing angels to be released, my neck was healed. I'm 19 now, but got saved at 16, and your show was here to guide me and help me grow in the Word and the supernatural of God. The testimonies I heard gave me such a great faith and made me want to live in holiness and righteousness. If it wasn't for It's Supernatural, I don't think I would be where I am today. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. Did you know that right now there's a satanic plot to destroy America, beginning with an all-out assault on your family? I'm Dr. Michael Brown. Join me on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as I share how we can overcome and defeat this ancient spirit of Jezebel.